Hello, I'm George Cairns, and in this video lesson, we're going to use Digital Photo Professional 4, Canon's free image editing software, to selectively lighten up underexposed shadows without blowing out correctly exposed highlights. In this shot here, I expose for the brighter clouds because it's much easier to recover shadow detail than it is to recover clipped, overexposed, or blown out highlight detail. And in the edited version, we've got much more detail in these underexposed shadow areas without overexposing the correctly exposed sky. So kick off by browsing to our underexposed start file in the folder window and then click on it as a thumbnail. And then to see a larger version, we're going to go up to edit image. And that gives us a nice clear view of the shot with lots of lovely tools to work with, including the handy histogram. Now I like the histogram because it enables me to diagnose problems with exposure very easily. We have a spread of tones in any photograph from dark shadows at the left to midtones in the middle to highlights at the far right. And in this histogram, we have got a spread of tones from shadow, midtone to highlight, but you can see we've got some very strong shadows here peaking towards the left, and that shows me that some of these areas are very underexposed. We can see that with the naked eye, and also we can see that with the histogram. Another way to find out which areas are over or underexposed is to use the highlight or shadow clipping warnings. And we can turn those on by clicking this icon here. And you can see that we've got clipped shadows or underexposed shadows in blue and clipped or overexposed highlights in red. Now let me talk a little bit more about clipping in detail so you can understand what these warnings are showing us. Have a look at RGB here. You get reds, greens, and blues that mix together to create all the colors. And if we use the cursor to sample these clipped shadows, you can see the RGB value is 10, 8, and 7. Now if it was going to print out as pure black, it would be a value of 0, 0, and 0. And as I move around, you can see we've got a bit of a threshold there. We've got 5, 3, and 2, so that's a darker area. This area here is 12, 11, 7, so it's lighter, but it's still showing up in the blue shadow warning. And on the other side here, we go to the brighter parts. Look at the RGB values there now. They're 244, 242, and 243. The brightest that can get is 255 for reds, greens, and blues. So these areas are quite bright, but they're not as pure white as they could be. Maybe I can find a lighter part here. 254, 250, and 251, that is almost pure white. So there's a bit of a range there of clipped highlights and clipped shadows. And you can change the range or threshold by popping down here and you can say, well, actually, at the moment, the threshold that I've set is a shadow value of 10 to show up anything 10 or darker. So I can maybe make that something lower, like 5. So I only see 5 down to 0. So I can see the darkest pixels in my shadows. And if we go to the highlights here, let's bump that up to about 250. So I can only see things that are 250 and above in these red patches because these will print out more likely as white and these will print out more likely as black. So I just need to be warned about the very brightest and the very darkest pixels in the picture. So when I click close now, we're going to see less highlight clipping warning and less shadow clipping as well. So there you go. You can now see the highlight clipping is only a tiny little patch up here. And if I move on to it, look at the RGB values are around about 251, 251 and 251. So that's almost as bright as you can get. And if I go to the shadows here now, that's four four and four. So I fine tuned my highlight and shadow warning just to show the brightest highlights and the darker shadows. And that's very useful when we start to adjust the tones, we'll see the clipping warning changing and that'll help us keep tabs on our adjustments just to make sure we don't clip the crucial shadow or highlight details. But looking at the photograph with the naked eye, you can see this area is still very underexposed. So what we need to do is try and brighten it up. And one way of doing that is to go to brightness adjustment and drag this to the right and look at the histogram. It's sliding to the right. The shadows are becoming more mid-tones and we're losing some of the shadow clipping warnings. So there's less dark areas here, but we've clipped the highlights. We can see a peak on the graph here at the far right, and you can see there's many more highlight clipping warnings showing up there now. So basically brightness is fine in certain circumstances, but when you've got a high contrast scene like this, you can't really lighten up the shadows without overexposing the originally correctly exposed highlights. So brightness adjustment is just not going to help us in this situation. We need to selectively lighten the shadows without overexposing the highlights too much. Now, a good place to start when you've got a high contrast scene like this is the auto lighting optimizer because it will try and improve the lighting in the shadows and the highlights. So tick to select that and you'll see that it's lightening up some of these underexposed shadows and we've got less shadow clipping warning showing up. Let me toggle that on and off. There's the before, there's the after. So you can see the differences. Now I'll have a look at the histogram when I do that. 
There's the before. You can see a stronger, darker peak that's at the left, and then that drops down a little bit when we turn on the optimizer and slides more to the right to show we've got some remapped shadows and they've got more mid-term values. So that's improved things a little bit, and it hasn't added any clipped highlights at the far right here. We're not seeing any more red patches in the sky. So that's a good place to start. And now we're ready to make some advanced selective tonal adjustments. Before we do that, I'm just going to right click on here and undock the histogram so it's now floating because I'm going to scroll down in the panel here, but I want to keep the histogram visible and I've gone down now to the advanced section. And if I selectively drag the shadows to the right, watch what happens to the histogram here. Here we go, dragging it from zero to the right and it's selectively brightening up the shadow section here without touching the highlights. So we're not blowing out the highlights anymore. You can see the clipping warning is the same there. There's no more red patches appearing. So this is a really useful way of selectively lightening up underexposed shadows without messing around with your correctly exposed highlights. So the histogram looks healthier now, and also it looks healthier with the naked eye. We can see more detail here in the foreground, and we've got less shadow clipping warning patches. If I move into this area here, you can see the RGB value is five, three, and three, so that's quite dark. So we could end up with areas of pure black showing up in these areas here, but that's fine. We do need some dark shadows and some bright highlights just to make sure we've got a nice contrast in our photograph. So a little bit of clipping at the very end is fine. So while the highlights aren't actually clipped, they could be a little bit blown out due to the auto lighting optimizer. So what we're going to do is just selectively drag the highlight slider to the left. And that's just revealing a little bit more mid-tone detail in those highlights. And you'll notice that the histogram in the brighter parts slid to the left here, just to show us we've got slightly darker highlights than we started with. And there's no clipping warning patches showing up in the brighter areas. But to the naked eye, that sky looks fine with lots of lovely detail and a nice range of tones from highlights to mid-tones. So there's my finished photograph. Let me just compare the before and after by clicking here and you can see that we've got our underexposed start image. We can't really see much detail in these areas here but the edited version has selectively lightened up the shadows and looks much better without blowing out those important highlights.